All right, so section 9-2. Back on the backboard right behind Elizabeth, I've mentioned these scales to you already, and we haven't really talked about any of those words, but today we will. TF1 says, I can demonstrate that the radian measure of an angle is the ratio of the length of the arc to the length of the radius of the circle, which is something that you're going to see today. Uh, some of the vocab you're going to hear me use radians, unit circle, central angle, and intercepted arc. And then it goes on to the skills. I, I can identify when the length of an intercepted arc of a central angle is the same length as the radius of a circle and explain the ratio of the length of the intercepted arc of an angle on the unit circle and the radian measure of the angle. And then TF2, it's kind of more for tomorrow or for when we do 9-3, but there are parts of it that will also be in there today, like identify coterminal angles and explain why they produce the same output when evaluated the lengths of the trig function. So just so you know, part of that we're going to do today, but most of that the next time. So first thing that I want to go through is I want to go through and show you guys how are you going to draw angles. Now you might think, well, we did that in geometry. Yes, you did. You drew angles in geometry. But the biggest angle you ever drew in geometry was 200, uh, 180 degrees. That was the biggest angle you ever drew. We are not drawing less than 180 necessarily. We are going to draw bigger angles like if I were to draw the angle 300. Okay. When you are drawing angles for this type of material, you're going to start with the coordinate plane. So you're going to start with an x and a y axis. So that's what you're going to start with. Then I'm going to make a red line on what I'm going to call the initial side. Initial meaning I'm starting here. Okay? So the red line is going to come right here. It starts at the origin and goes out to the positive side for the x-axis. <coughs> that is what is called the initial side. It's where you start. Now when I make a 300 degree angle, I'm going to take that initial side and I'm going to turn it 300 degrees. Now, every one of these lines that's on here, if I go from the x, positive x-axis to the positive y-axis, how many degrees did I go? 90. And then I go to here, that's another 90, so that's 180. Here is 270, and all the way back would be 360. So one full turn is 360 degrees. Am I going one full turn if I make 300? No. So you tell me when to stop. So I'm going to make this little art, this spiral thing inside here. About there? Now, what that does for us, just to let you guys know, is if we start at the initial side and rotate that arm around 300 degrees, it would stop at the terminal side. So just so that you guys know some of the things, this is the initial side, this is terminal side. Terminal meaning where it stops. Okay? That spiral thing that's in the middle of that, that is important. You need to make sure you show the spiral thing because... In a second, I'm going to ask you to graph a 900 degree angle, which is possible. So then we just keep going and spinning around the, the, in a circle. And if you don't put that, how am I supposed to know it's 900 degrees? So that's why it's important. But this is the first part that what you're going to do today. You're just going to draw angles. What do you think? So if you absolutely show that like I did like this, does that mean that you went around once already? If you act, yes, okay. then that would be bigger than 300. So each one of these corners, just so you guys know, is 90 degrees worth. And then it just keeps going. You just keep adding 90. Okay, so that's why I stopped there. All right, next one. I want you to graph 900.
Where do I start it? On the initial, where is the initial side supposed to be at? Always the initial side starts where? On the X. That, just so you know, always starts here. Okay, so the initial side is always going to be there. All right? Now, the other thing, the reason why I went the way I did, why I went counterclockwise, is because I'm going positive first. Like, I'm going up. All right? So now, 900 degrees. If I start spinning, 90, 180, 270, 360. Do I need to keep going? Now I'll make the spiral wider so that you can see it. 450, 540, 630, 720. Do I still need to keep going? Yes. 810, 900, right there on that spot. And my terminal side would be right, actually right there. And that would be a 900 degree angle. So yes, you may get a little dizzy or get hypnotized a little bit while you're by your circles, but that's what you do. What do you think? Pretty simple. Now, the next angle I'm going to ask you to do is negative 135. Oh my gosh. Now, this angle is very similar to the last one, except for instead of going counterclockwise, which way do you think I'm going to go? Right. Instead of starting to go up to begin with, I'm going to start by going down. So my Inner or my initial side always starts there, and now instead of going up with it, I'm going to go down with it. So this would be negative 90, negative 135 would be about here. It's about halfway in between those, because that would be negative 180 all the way up. So that's a negative 135. What do you think about the drawing of angles? Not too bad. Okay, that's the first thing that you'd have to do. Then, the second thing is probably just as easy as this. I'm going to ask you for coterminal angles. So I want you to think about this for just a brief second. What does the word co mean? Together. Together. Same, right? What did the word terminal mean? Where it, now it's starting, where it stopped, right? Where it ended. So we want co-ending angles, meaning I want a couple angles that are going to be the same line at the end, but they're not the same numbers. So here's what a co-terminal is by definition, or at least a quick definition. They are angles that stop. at the same spot. That's what they are. They're angles that stop at the same spot. So if I have a 235 degree angle, and I want, and the directions will ask you to give me one positive coterminal and one negative coterminal angle. Here's the, the, the way this works. If I'm looking at Yelena right now, and if I go like this, so if I'm going to go counterclockwise, one full turn, how many degrees did I go? 360. Right. So if you want to find a positive one that to 235, you add 360 to it. What's 235 plus 360? 595. If I took and drew a 235 degree angle and then drew a 595 degree angle, they would stop at the same spot. Now, here's the other option. What if I go clockwise 360 degrees? I'd be subtracting 360. So 235 minus 360 is how much? So if I were to draw a negative 125 degree angle, I would also have the same stop. So basically, to find your answers, you guys, you either add 360 and sub or subtract 360. Now, 
Are those the only answers I would accept? Absolutely not. Because how many times could you add 360 to something or subtract 360 to something? So you could have bigger numbers and it would work. That's fine. Now, what if I gave you a number like 600 and asked you for one positive and one negative? Well, I would have to keep subtracting until I got negatives. So 600, if I, huh? Add or subtract 360. Yep. So if I added 360, for instance, what's 600 plus 360? 960. But 600 minus 360 is what? If I borrow from this, that's a 5. Borrow. This would be 240. I didn't need to borrow on the last one, actually. Is 240 negative, though? No. Hey, guess what? I got two positive ones there that would still do the same thing. There's two answers for the positive side. So what do I have to do to get a negative, though? Keep subtracting again. Subtract again, and subtract as many times as you need until you get a negative. One positive, one negative. So what's 240 minus 360? Negative 120. So I could use 960 and negative 120. Or I could use 240 and negative 120. It doesn't matter. As long as you have one positive and one negative. What do you do with these You just, that's your answer. It will say find one positive and one negative coterminal angle. And they'll give you a degree. You add 360 or subtract 360. And you may have to add or subtract it more than once just because it might be still negative or still positive. Oh, yeah. Danny, what? Uh, so, would like, after you do that, could you say like 595 degrees and negative 125 degrees is co terminal to 235 degrees? Is that like how you awesome. say it? Sure. Yeah, that works. Okay, what do you guys think of those co terminals? All right, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to be introduced now to radian measure, which, again, according to the scales, that was one of the key words that we had in those. Now, to be honest, graphing those things when their degrees are a lot easier than they are graphing radian measure. So there is a way to convert them. If I had 120 degrees and I asked you to convert it to radian measure. Now, just so that you guys know what radian measure is, radian measure is of an angle, is in standard position, whose terminal side, so the ending side, intercepts an arc of length of r, which means radius. Okay, so it goes about a circle is what it goes about. And what's more, when it talks about length in a circle, we're referring to circumference a lot of times, okay, or part of it. When you want to convert to radian measure, you simply multiply it by pi over 180. Now when you do this, do not, I will repeat, do not put 3.14 in for pi or the pi symbol in your calculator. That's not the right answer. What you do is you take 120, put it over 1, and when you're multiplying things like this together, you take the top times the top, so what's 120 times pi? 120 pi, good. Divided by, what's 1 times 180? 180. Again, leave the pi alone, but can you reduce 120 over 180? I can reduce it, first of all, by dropping zeros off, and then can I cancel it further? I can go 6 into each of them. What's 12 divided by 6? 2. And what's 18 divided by 6? 3. And that would be your final answer. The pi symbol will be in your answers when you're converting to radians. Hmm? Yeah. Very much like a variable.
Okay? So if I got negative 150 degrees, what do I multiply it by? Pi over 180. Again, I'm converting it to radians. So I take that over 1, multiply straight across. What's negative 150 times pi? Good. And on the bottom, what's 1 times 180? Now, if you can, reduce it, which means I'm going to drop off the zeros. And if I divide them by 3, what would I get? And you got it. That's it. Now, some of the questions will ask you to convert to radians, while others will ask you to convert to degrees. So when you're converting to degrees, if you converted to radians by multiplying by pi over 180, I'd multiply it by its reciprocal. It would be 180 over pi, right? So for instance, if I gave you pi over 12, and I wanted you to convert it to degrees, you multiply it by 180 over pi. When you're converting to degrees, it's always multiply by 180 over pi. So what happens with the pi? Right, you ate it all, it's gone. If there's one on the top and one on the bottom, that means you ate it and it's gone. So what do I have left? 180 over 12, which, does anybody know what 180 over 12 is? 15. 15 degrees. So what about 9 pi over 4? Bless you. What do I multiply by? 180 over pi. What happens? Divide by the pi's, so the pi's cancel. And if I multiply it, bless you, what's 9 times 180 squared? 1620, I think. Divided by what's 4 times 1? So what's 1620 divided by 4? 405. 405 degrees. What do you think of those? Pretty simple? Okay, good. The last thing. There is something that I want you guys obviously to know, and that is what a sector is. My best description of a sector is, you guys have ate pizza in your life, or pie in your life. It's a piece of pizza. What does a piece of pizza look like? A circle and triangle. It's got an arc. Like that, okay? That's what a sector is. I'm going to give you two formulas now. One of them stands for arc length. And in order to find the arc length, what you do is you take the radius, r, and multiply it by theta. Now, what the arc length is, is this part that I'll put in green right here. It's this length right there. Like for instance, I know that there's a couple of you or at least one of you that play softball in here. Where in a normal softball field, that is a sector. It's 200 feet to each corner and then it arcs around. If I was Dakota Fence, the fencing company, and want to know how much fence I would need, this is the formula I would use to do it. Then, the other thing that we could also find is we could find the area of the sector. So, for instance, that's if you were to eat pizza and you ate it all, how much would you eat? I know you'd eat all of it, but it's one half r squared times theta. Theta is always in radians. So you need to put the radian measure when you type that in. Yes, you do. So theta is always in radians. 
So if I use the example of the softball field, if this was 200 and this was 90 degrees, even though it doesn't look like it, I can still say it is. The thing that I need first is this angle right there is known as a central angle, which again, that's one of my vocab words from the scale. I take 90 and convert it to radians. So 90 times pi over 180. Because that's a 90 degree corner. 90 pi over 180 reduces down to pi over 2. Then to get the arc length, so again, I'm Dakota Fence, figuring out how much fence I need to make this softball field work. I've got a radius of 200, and I'd multiply it by pi over 2. Now I guarantee you at places like that, they don't go around saying, I need a 100 pi fence. Multiply that out. Like take 200 times pi divided by 2, enter. And it'd be 314 feet. Homer. Homer.